Okay, this is what I look like when I take off on my hike. I got my little bait doodle here. Worms. I got a little cooler with worms in it. Plus, if I catch a fish, I'm gonna keep in there. There's an ice pack in there. My backpack, I got purple drink. I have a little lunch. It's just some frozen uh, grapes that I dipped in jello stuff. You know, the sprinkles of jello. They call them sour grapes. You just sprink, you use lemon juice and then you roll them in lemon juice and then you sprinkle them with the, the sugar free jello stuff. And then you uh, freeze them. And they're, they're delicious. And they're nice and cool. And they're keep cold in my cool cool pack so i'm gonna i'm gonna work my way down i i i have tempted to, to i want to try not as far down i just want to try a couple new spots it's all like a, a new spot so but it's funny i often wonder as he's cutting off the blood in my shoulder i have to wonder like how many people would would find this fun that watch this? I mean, obviously, people who love fishing enjoy this, but cicada. But uh, a lot of people tend to be like afraid of the wilderness, and I'm way the heck back in the wilderness here. So I would not be surprised at all if a bear walked on this trail last night or today. And there's, it's a hiking trail, but nobody ever comes down here because it's like three miles or so, maybe more, four miles, I don't know, from where you, people park. So it's a designated pathway, but very few people ever come back here because it's so far back. You know, you get tourists, they'll park at the, a waterfall and walk down a half a mile or a quarter mile and go, oh, that's beautiful and take some pictures and that's that people do come back here snowshoe skiing though and snowshoeing during the winter but uh nobody back here like i'm the only one crazy enough to come back here all alone completely unarmed i don't even carry a knife i got a pocket knife in my backpack but i don't don't worry about it. I don't even carry my BB pistol here. I should, but uh, I don't. Anyways, I'm not scared. I know I am very alone. There's not a human for many miles. And uh, if I was to get hurt, I forbid I could die here very easily. And there's nobody coming for help. I don't even think I have a signal, so I couldn't even call for help. It's not necessarily the smartest thing anyone can do. But uh, if this is how I go out, I go out doing what I love. So, And I do love it. I love just being out here in the woods, quiet. The wind, the birds, the insects, the fish. Just me and God. You see... God made this. This is his artwork. This is his hand. And one of the reasons he made it, well, the main reason he made it is for us to enjoy, to appreciate, to utilize, to benefit from. Sadly, today with technology and the internet and phones and all that stuff, most people don't ever come out and enjoy this. They don't experience what I'm experiencing right now. They don't see it. They don't smell it. They don't hear it. They don't taste it. They don't feel it. They don't even know what this is. Me, right now, I can breathe for the first time. Like, I, I'm just like, that's a squirrel. Can you hear that? That's a red squirrel, pine squirrel. I mean, most people in their life, day-to-day -day life, We'll never even see a tree this big in their life. This is a 300 year old tree. I mean, this tree is 25 feet around. This thing is a monster and it never does it justice when you walk up to a tree like this, but 
I mean, this tree's 100, 120 feet tall, at least 100. And, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big guy, but this thing's massive around. Most people will never see something like that. I get to see it today. And it, that's, if that's not the one, God, that is a big tree, man. I wish you could see how big that tree is. But there's another one that's leaning over here. This one here, it's another really big one. Not quite as big. I would say 250 years old, 275, probably 275, but starting to lean. And it's right on top of this hill here. And so it's gonna go. See this tree leaning? It's gonna go soon. I mean, I don't know, next 10, 10 years probably. And when that thing goes, man, kaboom. Trust me when I tell you, it makes a sound. Uh, this year alone, I've had two trees fall down when I was here fishing. Because it was a really windy spring. And I heard two trees crash down. Just the last time I was here, one scared the crap out of me. And it's always freaky when you hear <laughs> crash, bang, bang. I, uh, I think this is where I went in last time. So I uh, came out. I think I'm gonna go in here and fish my way down. Um, this is kind of a new stretch of river. I haven't really fished a whole lot. Plus, I just don't think many people have fished here because it's hard to get to. You gotta crash through the woods and slide down this hill. I never know what you might jump back here. But anyways, spending my day with God in the wilderness. With me and God alone. Uh, where can I get down to this river, man? Man, it's a straight, straight, freaking, straight drop down there. I know where this is. I fished here before. I gotta get in this this gully here. I could slide down on my butt. It's not always an option. I think I'm gonna go for it. If I go down, it'll make for a good video. Uh, see, I'm pretty sure-footed. My cousin Johnny used to call me the billy goat because I would do stuff like this. By the way, I, that stick was just stabbing me in the leg. I have to be careful because if I cut my, I'm on blood thinners. So if I cut myself, I'm, uh, I could bleed out. So I got to be really careful. I snagged myself with a treble hook last fall when I was salmon fishing. And um, blood all over the freaking place. You know, it's pretty cool. This is this is actually not a great trout fishing spot, but there's a beautiful red flower over here. See this gully here? This is where, like, the when it rains, water kind of washes down here. Oh, man, it's hard to get through here. So I guess I can get in here. Fish three, four hundred yards down. Probably mucky right here, but I can get in here. Easy enough to fish. I'll throw a worm in that hole too. And we shall see what we get. You never know until we know. But isn't this a pretty red flower over here? I don't know what their their scientific names are. But right there. Pretty red flower. That's a good log right there. I would not be surprised if I caught a trout in there. All right, there's some good log jams here. I don't know if I've ever fished this stretch. So, look at, there's a spring here. There's a cold water spring. You see why it's, it's all wet and it's the little creek flowing there? Oh my goodness, I see a trout right there. Holy crap. I see two nice ones right freaking there. Right there. Oh, I'm gonna try to catch those. There's one about an eight to 10 inch here and there's one about a six inch here. Let's see if we can get get a bite on these things. I can't believe I can see them right there. Almost looks like they're spawning. Let me see if I can get them on video. I'm gonna let's turn this around. 